Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome again to your Friday Spite here on Pagan Perspective. This week we are talking about science behind paganism, witchcraft, energy workings, and different things like that. Um, this is a very loose science, and what I mean by that is we don't have proof or significant enough evidence to say this works better than this, or this works better than this, or this does work. We don't even have enough evidence to say that um, the things that a lot of us witches do even works. So, um, I'm scooching the camera forwards. Um, so, whenever you ask, does this technique work better than this technique, really, the best thing I can tell you is practice. Practice with different techniques. See what works for you. I'm a pretty strong believer in the idea of chaos magic, because of how I view the divine and things like that, I don't necessarily view them as literal physical beings that might look or act this way even. Um, I just kind of view the images of the divine and names that we assign to them as different personalities, concepts, mental constructs that we apply to our lives and try to practice whatever they do, you know, or work it into our realization of life. Anywho, so I believe in chaos magic, which basically if it works for you, keep doing it. It doesn't matter if this technique works better for someone else or if this technique works better for this person, you know. It really varies on the witch and why it does that is because what images make you resonate certain thoughts to those images are going to help with spells that resonate those things, like you're trying to manifest. For example, like if you look at a dog and you think loyalty, um, you, would, you could use a dog talisman or a dog image or the image of a dog or visualize a dog in a spell that you were trying to achieve lo some kind of loyalty in like maybe a partner or a friend or get a friendship or something like that. But someone else could look at a dog and think um, ravenous warrior type war god hellhound type thing, you know what I mean? And so they could look at a dog and think something very different and use it for very different spells and things like that, and um, some people might look at, say, a jellyfish and think calm and serenity, and other people might look at a jellyfish and think, um, I don't know, energetic or something, I don't know. Anyway, you get my point. <laughs> um, anyway, that also being said, I would say if you are that interested in it, look into high magic, which is like, um, it's... It's just another word for this. Uh, ceremonial magic. Um, those two, I think, are the same. Correct me if I'm wrong, someone. Uh, but anyway, those two things is magic systems, or are magic systems that are very strict and have a lot of rules. And that actually works really well for a lot of people because whenever you add rules to something or say, oh, this way is better if you do this way or this way is better if you do that, um, as long as you aren't like trying to push your own personal rules of how you do magic on someone else, uh, as long as you practice those things, it can actually make it a lot more powerful because you are adding importance to it. For example, um, lately I've been getting into the Necronomicon, and I know that it's a fake fantasy thing, but I believe in chaos magic, so I, I'm kind of taking the Cthulhu mythos and putting it to my own practice in a sense. Um, I can go on around, I'll do that in another video. But, my point is that um, if you add all these like rules and stuff, for example, certain things in the Necronomicon are like, never use this unless, blah blah blah, and um, in actuality, you could use it for whatever reason you want, but if you add something like, never use this for except blah, or whatever, um, it adds importance to it in your mind, and so whenever you use that for the right reason that you have dictated as the right reason, it adds importance and it makes it more powerful, in my opinion. Anyway, uh, they also asked this week about merging energies with your spirit guide, and they described uh, an event where they felt like their spirit guide came into the came into their body, I guess, and uh, they merged energies. A unique energy merging is what they said, I think. And all I have to say about that is, um, I'm a, I can't explain your experience for you. It's kind of like um, 
whenever somebody asks me to interpret their dreams for them, I can give them my opinion on it, but the best person to interpret someone's dreams would be the person who had the dream. And, um, so I'm not going to be able to, like, explain your experience completely, but I'll give it a shot. Uh, I think you're probably channeling your spirit guide or sharing the body, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I think that's what you're experiencing. And yes, that does happen. I've had similar things happen to me before with the spirit guides that I've had. Um, I, I wasn't sure if you were, like, saying this was a bad thing or a good thing. I wasn't really sure what you were asking about this, but... Yeah, that happens, <laughs> is all I can really think to answer that. Anyway, thanks for watching me ramble, and peace.